Scott, thank you for joining us. A point gained here at the Broadfield Stadium. How would you assess that match? Um, I think we've done everything possible to try and win a game of football tonight. You know, I think we played really well. Um, I think that we played against a very strong um, defensive unit, which is really difficult to break down. Um, but we we tried everything. You know, we we tried putting the ball wide. I thought the two wide lads in Addy and and Harry Forster were outstanding today. You know, I thought they caused a lot of problems down the flanks. Um, we tried to make runs in behind from central areas, and we tried shots from distance. You know, we sh we tried obviously we set pieces where the fans get so disgruntled when we play it short but we know we know what we're doing you know we know what we're doing we know where the spaces are and we know by playing it short it, listen they, the fans want me to sling or want us to sling the ball in the box straight away from the corner so do Barra by the way that's exactly what Barra wanted us to do um, so you know we, we created chances from that from playing short and then getting shots away or, or getting uh, crosses in um, and we you know I thought we did everything possible to win a game of football. We had some some good chances towards the end there. Um, Lola said a header, which probably actually ended it too well in the end. Um, and there's some other bits and pieces, you know. And I thought that we did everything possible. I thought the players were outstanding tonight. Yeah, obviously Crawley made a series of good saves in the second half, but especially in the first half, we seemed to limit Barrow to actually very few chances. Um, it always makes it, I suppose, more difficult when then you go one nil down when a team is so happy to sort of sit back and, as you say, are hard to break down. So, did that sort of disturb the game plan in any sense that, that you then had to chase more? No, we knew that they'd do that um, from the off, which they did. You know, straight from the off, they did that. They they kind of sit in and bank in and they, they play a back five and a three across midfield and front two um, and they narrow the pitch off and, and just try and make um, make it really hard for you to play around their shape um, we you know first half I felt that we we played around their shape but kind of didn't play through it as, as well as I'd have wanted we, we, we talked about a few things at half time about you know playing around the shape but then coming inside the pitch um, and making runs off the back of them um, so we, talk, we spoke about a few actions where we felt we could get in and I thought we did it better in the second half um, <coughs> excuse me so listen my players did everything possible to win that game today we come across a really good strong defensive unit today and you know, uh, I, know you know, I know we scored a goal or a penalty but um, it, it, was, it was difficult it was difficult to break them down and, and we tried everything possible I thought their keeper was probably their best player yeah, it's always hard when you go into the break one nil down. Um, what was the message you gave to the lads at half time? Because it did seem that they came out sort of, you know, properly at the races and were, you know, giving it a right go. Was there any specific message that you gave to them at half time? Uh, I didn't. Th I didn't talk about too much defensively because I thought it was okay. I thought the goal, our shape looked a bit wrong. You know, we didn't. The right hand side centre half um, carried the ball up the pitch too far for me, and I think we could have jumped. We, we were a little bit out of sorts with that shape. So defensively, not, didn't speak about anything, but we spoke about how we're going to get through their shape, um, and, and we spoke about two, well, we spoke about three actions where I think we could hurt them, um, and, I, and I, like I say, I think we did that better in the second half. Um, but yeah, we we had all the ball. Um, I would I would imagine our xG will be higher than theirs. Um, you know, we like I say, I think their keeper had a blinder. I thought he made some really good saves. It was a, a really good save in the first half from Lolas. Lolas gets in in behind them and God knows how he makes that save but he does he makes himself really big and I thought he was their best player tonight Yeah ultimately it is a point in the right direction it's a point that keeps us in those places with two massive games to go so I suppose the message to the players would be you know we've got two massive games ahead of us and you know keep the faith because again it's still in our hands Everything's positive in that room um, in that dressing room now because I'm really pleased with the way we played tonight I think that we showed a real character to try and win a game of football against a good side and um, like I say, there were some really outstanding performances tonight. I thought Addy was brilliant, obviously tired towards the end. He'd run out of steam. <coughs> Excuse me. And and Harry Forster, you know, I thought was outstanding as well. And you know, um, and you know all the time he's on the pitch that, that, that something can happen. We put Adam on the pitch because he's obviously got, got goals in him. We put Rolls on the pitch because he can create um, stuff in the final third. And we obviously needed that goal, you know. So we, we, we brought Jay off. Um, I've got to be honest with you. I'm really disappointed with with the booking of Jay. Um, the fourth official gets him booked, and I, I just don't understand it. You know, uh, Jeremy Jeremy makes the foul, and he books Jay. Now Jay's missing for the next two games.
like, like, incredible. Yeah, the positive message obviously needs to be echoed to the fans. We've got these two big games ahead of us, one of those away at Sutton. It's one of those sort of local derby ones. We've already sold well in advance of 850 tickets, looking to tick over to 1,000. You know, the, as you said at the start of the interview, fans can easily get disgruntled, but we sort of need to put everything beside us now, don't we, and just, you know, really get the lads sort of, you know, rocking away at Sutton for these two ne next two games. Yeah, there's nothing better than a local derby second... Uh, or um, with two games to go, you know, and, and we're, we're in the playoffs and, and they need their points to stay up. It's a massive game for both clubs, right? Um, so we're, we're going to embrace that and enjoy it. If you play anything like that, we'll be all right. Thanks, Scott. Thank you. Yeah, you had some quite strong words after the Colchester defeat on Saturday for your players. You must have been really pleased with the way they've reacted, especially with the defence. Yeah, no, listen, the strong words were... I, I actually didn't have strong words for the players. I, I just felt that we became a little bit sloppy and unprofessional in moments. I actually think we played quite well at, against Colchester. You know, I, I, I just felt that we've got to remain focused. And when you know, whilst these games are really important, we, it's even more so reason to, to have full focus. And I felt that we, we dropped our focus a little bit in a, in a couple of moments in that game. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but tonight, I've got no complaints. I've got no complaints at all. I thought I thought we were very good. I thought we did everything we could to win this game of football tonight, apart from put the ball over the the line the second time. You know, mm. um, so yeah, I, I'm 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 really pleased with the performance. Of course, we wanted three points tonight. It was really important we got three points tonight, but we haven't, and there's nothing we can do about it now because it's mm. gone. Um, all we can do is 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 keep encouraging the players to play that way. And I think if we play that way in the next two games, I think we'll be fine. Um, I don't want to get you in any kind of trouble, but the jo going back to the Jay Williams thing, how frustrating is that for you? It's just a joke. I, I, I just don't, I don't understand why Jeremy makes the foul, mm. and the referee's not blown the whistle for a foul. Jay, uh, Jay comes in and wins the tackle, and then he blows for a foul. But it's Jay, it's uh, Jeremy that's made the foul. Mm. Why are we booking Jay? Yeah. Uh, and the fourth official standing right there. I just, it's big as belief. Um, and we're dealing with these situations every week, every Saturday, every Tuesday, every game, there's a situation with a referee or an official, every week. And, and it's, it's probably, the importance of this game is massive, right, for both clubs, for both clubs. Yet he's made a decision that's now going to like, affect me moving forward in the next two games. Yeah. And it's the wrong decision. Mm. Yeah, I can't go in there, or I can go in there and moan about it, but nothing will get done. No. And that's that's the big thing for me. He's booked the wrong person. Yeah. It's, it's clear, so clear. And the, like you say, the repercussions for you personally. The repercussions the is yeah. he misses two games yeah. now. The yeah. biggest two games of this cl football club's history, mm. he misses. Yeah. And he's probably been arguably my best player. Mm. He's a, you know, he's a rock in the middle of the, middle of the park, and he's done so, so well for me. Yeah, he can't play in these next two games now because yeah. the decision's wrong. Yeah, it, sh it should be looked at. It's not fair. Yeah, absolutely. Now looking at Sutton, uh, it, I mean, I know they're all huge games now, but now you've, like you say, these decisions from the referee have made you think about probably you have to change your plans for that game now. Yeah, I've not that. thought about that yet. I mean, yeah. obviously, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to go um, go home tonight and and uh, I'll watch our game back in the morning and in the afternoon I'll watch, uh, I'll watch loads of Sutton and come Thursday I'll be prepared and ready to go and, and know exactly what I'm doing, you know. Um, but yeah, I mean, obviously the game's just finished so I've not, I've not really looked at Sutton yet, so I don't know what I'm going to do, you know. Yeah. Thanks, Scott. Thank you. Just quickly on Jay, um, uh, Scott, I mean, there's nothing really you can say to him, is there? This, this is the thing. I mean, what can you say to him to... Uh, Make him feel any better after that? Is this well, how is he? How is he taking? Well, I spoke to him yesterday. I felt that he's played with the handbrake on over the last two games, actually. And I've said to him, "Look, don't play with the handbrake on. This is such an important game, and I want you to play like you play. And you know, I don't want you to get booked, mind. You know, <laughs> but play like you play." Um, I thought he was unfortunate. I think he's really, really unfortunate. I think he's unlucky. I think the referees target him. I don't think that was a prime example of that. I, re I really do. It's not much you can say, is it, really? Uh, no, it's, it's unfair on the kid. The kid's, it's his first year 
playing like proper, like professional football. I know he was at Northampton before, but this is his first year as a as a season pro, you know, and he's come out of non-league. He's done a- absolutely outstanding for me, and then he gets punished for something that he hasn't done. I just it's beggar's belief. I, I'm really, really angry about it. Um, you know, and I, there's nothing we can do. Thank you. From the, from the Argus. Can I just ask about the sort of the atmosphere around the stadium? It almost felt, I know it's you're not playoffs yet, but it almost had that tension to it, that edge to it. Did you sort of feel there was an extra sort of like there was a lot on the game? No, I didn't take any notice. If I'm honest with you, I can't, I'm fully focused. What's going on on the on the green bit? Uh, the green bit. I don't, you know, I know the fans are brilliant and they have been all season, but I don't, I don't kind of really take much notice of atmospheres and that I'm concentrating on the on the grass you know and um, but I thought the fans were good I thought the fans were good tonight and amongst the team as well did it feel did it start to feel like the stakes are sort of cranking up at all um, maybe but uh, listen I think that we're probably out of all the teams that are in in and around them playoff positions I think we're probably the team that are actually maybe the most calmest based on the fact that we're not supposed to be here we're supposed to be in the bottom two, right? According to everybody at the start of the season, so we're a little bit like, no, we're, we're we're okay. Do you know what I mean? We're we're actually enjoying being where we are, um, and in in two games' time, we'll see whether we're still going to be in there or not. And either way, we've still had a fantastic season, right? And we're just we're just taking each game as it comes, and we know what we've got to do. We want to get in there because we think that for all the work that we've done and all the all the heartache of of losing and all the, all the travelling we've done and all the um, you know all the all the training we've done all the debriefing sessions all the all the hard work everybody's done we now want to get in there you know we don't want to let it slide and um, but I think everybody's been fantastic all the staff the players everybody's been brilliant but I do feel as if we're not supposed to be here so we're just enjoying it is, is basically what I'm trying to say. Dan, thank you for joining us. Uh, a point gained here at the Bournemouth Stadium this evening. Can I get your overall reflection on the game first? Uh, yeah, I thought we played really well tonight. Um, the tempo was really good right from the start. Uh, we played some really good football. I think if you were watching from the stands, you would have quite enjoyed the game tonight. Um, I think we're disappointed to come away with just a point, um, especially with a second half performance. But like you said, it's a point gained, I guess. And we've got two massive games to go now. So we'll take both of them as they come and see what happens. Yeah, the gaffer said we did pretty much everything we could to have won the game. I didn't put the ball in the back of the net for the second time. It was it a frustrating game because Barrow looked sort of very content to sort of sit behind the ball and sort of you know try and stall us as much as possible. Yeah, I think you got to give Barrow some credit for this season because that's the way they play and uh, they've been very effective with, effective with it and that's why they are where they are on the table. But I felt like we were going to get a second. I felt we were playing really well and causing them problems and. To be fair to them, the keepers made a few great saves and a couple of our chances have just gone past the post near the end. So, yeah, look, we'll brush ourselves down and we'll move on to Saturday. Yeah, one of those football cliches, I suppose, of if the game was 10 minutes longer, perhaps the result ends a little bit differently. Um, was there sort of any frustrations that it took as long as it did sort of kick in or were the, were the lads just sort of really thrown off by the, by the goal? Because as the gaffer said, it came at a sort of strange time where we looked to be pressing a lot and sort of pegged us back. And it's often the way in football, isn't it, that... You know, when you start chasing, the, the game plan can go slightly out the window. Do you think there was anything to do with that, do you think? Well, I think the way we play, we kind of know what plan A is and we kind of stick with that. Um, the goal at the time it came probably did catch us by surprise because I felt like we were on top and we were really controlling it. Um, but again, it was a great reaction from the boys and we came in at half time and came out for the second half and started like we did the first half. So credit's got to go to the boys for not dropping their heads and fighting back and kind of controlling it and we got the goal we deserved. 20 goals for the season for yourself. We've spoken in previous interviews about targets. You've said that you're not going to publicly reveal them. Is this one that you can now publicly reveal? Was 20 always the target from the start of the season? I think uh, me and Larry say we don't talk about targets, but the other day we kind of had a bit of a laugh about it and kind of said I was one away from 20. Um, So yeah, I'm happy. I'm happy to get my 20th tonight, but I'd much rather have been making it three points instead of just the point. But... Yeah, we'll move on, to, move on to Saturday and hopefully get a couple more before the end of the season. Yeah, still plenty of opportunities for yourself and for the club. It's a point, as I said, gained that keeps us in those playoff places. Obviously, Doncaster have still got one more game to play. 
other than us, they play on the you know next Tuesday after playing on Saturday as well. But it's still very much in our hands, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I think definitely. I think we've seen this season everyone can beat anyone, and we'll go into the last two games, try and take maximum points from it, and whatever will be on April twenty seventh will be. So we know we've given it our all, and we'll keep doing that for the last ten days of the season. Yeah, plenty of time to sort of take a look back at this game. We know how much the gaffer loves sort of debriefing the game properly and breaking it down, which is obviously very important. But you can't help but not get excited for Saturday. Obviously, a big local derby, as Scott said, it means a lot for both clubs. Obviously, Sutton are fighting, you know, for their last sort of relegation spot after Forest Green was confirmed this evening. So you know, there's a lot, uh, there's a lot on the line. But we're backed by probably going to be over a thousand Crawley fans. So as a player, you must be really excited for that. Yeah, it's fantastic to take that amount of away fans to that game and. I think the Colchester result helped, well, I guess it helped us, but put more pressure on Sutton for Saturday. So it's going to be an exciting game for both sets of fans. And I think we can go in it and try and carry on from where, where we left off tonight and play really fast and exciting football. Perfect. Thank you, Dan. Thanks. Dan, um, I think Alex Ferguson called this time, this time of the season squeaky bum time. Mm. Are, are you as players feeling sort of any pressure at all, do you think? or nah, is it Not one no. bit, I'll be honest with you. Um, we've kind of said it from the start. We know how good we are as a team and... We know what performances we can put in. Um, Saturday, just gone, obviously, was a disappointment. That happens in football, and we knew we had to bounce back tonight with a positive performance. Um, we probably felt we deserved the three points, but so we'll take the point and move on to the next one. Yeah, and um, yeah, we mentioned the 20 goals. You must be delighted to hit that, well, tar call it a target. <laughs> don't know if it is or not, but you must be delighted to hit 20 goals. Yeah, yeah. It's a, for me personally, it's a, it's a good achievement, and kind of my first full year playing week in week out in, in the league and to be able to achieve that I'm, I'm really happy with but again I'll be even happier if come April 27th win that in that <laughs> playoff spot so yeah we'll see um, Jay, uh, Scott Lindsay was very cross about the Jay Williams booking very early on what was your view of that and it must be gutting to not have Jay in those last two games of the, sort of, of the regular season yeah I don't know if you can appeal for a ref booking the wrong player um, <laughs> it was just I just honestly couldn't understand it was blatantly obvious who Jeremy Kelly made the first foul shall we say mm. um, and then to pull out a card that early on in the game as well when some of their players had five or six fouls and he was going to me oh, I don't want to book them just yet I'm like it's the 70th minute now and you've booked three of our players already in the first half so mm. that's, it's a big miss for us but again we've shown mm. all year when we've missed players like Dion was out for a bit Liam Kelly was out for a bit Jay Williams was out for a bit we know what a squad we've got and we know who we want to play so and hopefully we can get him back for the playoff games. And um, looking ahead at Sutton, as a player, you must relish this kind of game. Big local derby, so much in it for both sides. Yeah, definitely. We said the same going into the Wimbledon, a game away, what a game that was going to be. Mm. And we're going to do the same going into this game against Sutton. It's a fantastic opportunity for us and a lot on the line. So, yeah, we're looking forward to it. Brilliant. Thanks, Dan. Just as you've reached this landmark, can I just ask what has clicked for you here at Crawley? How is it? What do you put this sort of success down to? Yeah, I think firstly, probably playing week in, week out. Um, as a striker, kind of gives you the confidence to to know you're going to be playing and to kind of get into a bit of a rhythm. And then just working with the gaffer and and with mainly Carl Lowerman as well. Um, we've got a great great working relationship. I kind of know what the gaffer wants wants from me and on how we play, and I feel like we play in a in a fashion that suits me. So. No, I think the coaching staff have been great with me this year, kind of building up my confidence and have allowed me to kind of do what I do best and get in the box and score some goals. And what is it that you like about that way of playing? It's got a patient style, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's a, it's a style which I guess fans maybe sometimes think we can maybe boot the ball a bit forward a bit quicker at times, but it's one where we create lots of chances and we create good chances. It's not kind of just lumping the ball long and trying to win a flick on and someone else running in behind. It's, it's good football and we score good goals. and. I think most fans would be really happy with the style of football that the gaffers brought into this club and the way we're playing. And if I was a fan, and I was coming to watch this every week. I'd be really happy. And just finally, if you were to get into the playoffs, what would that be the biggest games of your career? Yeah, I think. Listen, I've played in FA Cup games before and against big teams, but for me, the league doing it across 46 games and to be in that final playoff spot with a team like Crawley would be massive. And I know all of us would relish the chance to do that, and we're all working really hard to hopefully achieve that. Um, a lot has been made of your goals and rightly so but uh, what about your defensive work as well so there's times today we would look up and you'll be battling back in your own half so just talk to me about that work rate as well yeah I think like Carl uh, Larryman said to me as well he goes if you work hard your goals will come and I like to think I'm a team player and if I can track back and, and make a tackle to help someone else out then I'm going to get a bit of good climb up the other end so no, it's a team game and if I've got to run 40 yards to make a tackle, I'm more than happy to do it, knowing that they're going to put a ball on a plate for me two yards out from goal, hopefully, later on. So 
I just look at it as playing football and enjoying it. And Scott said uh, to us before that he thinks Crawley are the calmest team in the race for the playoffs. Would you agree with that as well? Yeah, yeah. I don't feel like we've got any pressure. Or we're not feeling any pressure in the changing rooms. Um, we've got a great group of boys, a bunch of boys who want to want to do well, want to push forward and kick on with their careers and, and do that with Crawley. So, yeah, I don't think we're feeling any pressure at all. We're just enjoying it. And I think performances like tonight where we're playing with such freedom, you can see it. There's not really much pressure on us and there's no fear from us. Thank you very much. <coughs> yeah, so and before the penalty, it, it was a while before you obviously took up and scored it. Did you feel pressure before? Did you feel anything before? No, nah, nothing. I was quite looking forward to it. I thought this is a chance to get the 20, to be honest with you. I know Gaffer's got a little nine word saying to me, which I think I'll let him reveal closer towards the end of the se season. But yeah, I was kind of just letting them nine words go through my head again and then kind of just thought, yeah, this is it. Let's, let's put the ball in and start thinking ahead to get in a second. That's one, thank you.